Welcome to Denim Denim. Today we're kicking off the Denim Jacket series. We'll look at three types of truckers in the next few episodes, then wrap it up with all the other types of denim coats in the Levi's historical and LVC collections. This episode is the first, and we'll focus on the grandfather to the trucker, the triple pleated blouse. In the beginning, 1873, Levi's made sack coats for people working indoors or walking around. These coats fell to the thighs of the wearer. For miners bent over and squatting in a cave, the shorter denim blouse was the preferred garment. Denim wears smoother over time. It's a material that can be worn wet and dry fast. This made the denim blouse the perfect partner for the first blue jeans. Now the weather in Northern California doesn't require the layers of wool and leather that more extreme winters would bring. Prospectors could wear their denim pants and tops eight months out of the year. It's not a shirt, it's not a jacket. It was the armor of the day. While going through a heap of trash in Northern California, someone discovered this 1878 triple pleated blouse. It is the basis for the recreations for the 1878 models and for the 1880s. Notice these beautiful green rivets. That's what happens to copper after 25 years. Copper will go from its copper reddish color to black and then eventually to that patina green. Now we're going to see this model in the rooftop version of the LVC collection. A little more wearable. Unlike the 501 jeans, the jackets don't come with a to the owner of letter. So I'll read you the story from this marketing campaign from the bottom of the mines to the top of skyscrapers. The triple pleated blouse is one of the oldest denim jacket styles around. It was created in 1878 and West Coast miners immediately adopted it as their uniform. A lot of them would have worn it during the gold rush in Bodie, California that started the same year. The rush only lasted until late 1880, but during that time the miners produced over 33 million in gold. That's over 780 million in today's dollars. In the 1920s and 30s, iron workers in New York and Chicago wore the triple pleated blouse. They donned the jacket while they built the first modern skyscrapers like the infamous Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building. The fearlessness and hard work of these iron workers helped establish each city as a major architectural force in the world. One of the features of the triple pleated blouse that miners and iron workers liked best was the pleating in the front. It made the jacket expandable so layers of clothes could be added underneath. This made it easier for miners to stave off the western winters and for iron workers to stave off the wind at high altitudes. On the front, the two hand pockets were held together by LSC and Co's famous rivets, which made them far less susceptible to ripping. This feature came in handy as they were This feature came in handy as there were many things to snag a jacket on the mines and on the construction sites. Here are the details of the triple pleated blouse. And I'm going to go a little beyond what Levi's is telling you. It comes in white line selvage and you'll see different weights posted, but mostly it's going to be 9 or sometimes 12 ounce. It has three pleats, and remember, you can cut these pleats open to make it a larger jacket. Two front pockets, uncovered. Your hands can go in them if you have an oversized, but if it fits you, they might be a little high. And exposed rivets, 
And notice the rivets have that patent May 1873 on them. The buttons will be sewn on, and there are some complaints about sewn on buttons falling off more commonly. The triple pleated blouse has a cinch on the back. If you need to cut your cinch, I have a video for that. Now you'll see the tag on the right for 1878 models and in the middle for the 1880s. All of the triple pleated blouses come with the original patch, the duck and denim leather patch, instead of the two pulling horses. As early as 1890, Levi's internally would have referred to the pleated blouse as the 506, but we don't have that written on the tack or the patch yet until the 20th century. Of course there's a rigid model. It's a complete recreation of the oldest relic blouse found, and it has this wonderful gold stitching upon the darkness of the rigid that just shines, and so do the copper rivets and metal buttons. 1878 models come with the patch on the right side, along with a T-back stitching, which is an item we'll be looking for in a lot of these trucker jackets. A very important vault recreation is the 1878 rooftop. It has the cinch cut off, yet still intact. It has stitching all over the place, rusted buttons. The green patina isn't as noticeable on the rivets. One pocket has been sewn shut and it has been replaced with an inside pocket. There's a white and blue checkered gingham model that comes in heavily distressed yet not ripped and comes with a nice little sachet to put gunpowder or such in. The triple pleated blouse 1878 does come in a duck model. We're not sure if it's an accurate or if not. We've never found any relics of such. It is a beautiful piece. The 1880s model based on the recreation, has the patch in the center. It has two seams going down the back instead of the coveted T back. All the other details are the same between the two jackets. They've made a few variations of raw denim with this, a darker rigid, a lighter indigo, and even a medium washed. For Distressed, we have the 1880s Goose Egg from the Home Run catalog. Wonderful distression colors and restitching in the upper back. Then we jump to 1897. We have a blanket line pleated blouse. Oh, that blanket lining keeps you nice and warm inside. But notice there's a few other detail changes. We have real buttons instead of the sewn on ones. We have two pockets that are shaped like pentagons with, that are covered with a button. And we won't see this flap in that shape until the Type 3. The leather patch has been taken off of the back. We can now see rivets holding the cinch together, which weren't there in the previous triple pleated blouses. The patch is been moved to just below the neckline on the inside, which is where we will see it for the rest of the duration. Levi says that these are true to fit, which means if you are a medium top, you'll buy a medium. If you buy it in your size, it's going to sit above your waistline. Now, if you downsize, you can wear it like a shirt, put a coat over that. You can also alter it by cutting off the arms and turning it into a vest. And you can cut the stitching over the pleats to make it just a little bit larger if you have a belly or you like to wear a thick sweater underneath it. If you upsize, Remember that you're getting raw denim if you get the rigid or indigos, and they will shrink in the wash uh, 
up to a full size from like a large down to a medium. If you get the distress like the goose egg or the rooftop, you're not getting any shrinkage, minimal shrinkage in there, maybe about half a size. And you also have the cinch to use. Really the most important measurement to look for is this chest measurement here, because if it's too small there, it just won't fit you. But again, upsizing, you roll up the sleeves, you have it hang a little lower, and you can actually use the pockets as hand pockets if you upsize. So you want to make a Canadian tuxedo. Well, we'll wrap each episode of the denim jackets up with this section. And again, you can match a triple pleated blouse with a pair of 1984 501s. No problem. Even some orange tab. It's going to be eclectic if you know your LBC items, but I'm going to base these pairings on historical accuracy. So something within the same time period that the details will fit each other. And if you're going for the 1878 triple pleated blouse, you can match those, of course, with the first blue jean from 1873, the 1876 oldest, oldest, grimy grimes, the 1878 pantaloons, the 1879's unofficial first 501, the 1880s blouse, of course, goes with a pair of Nevadas or even the Nap Avs. Nobody really wears the really ripped Nap Avs. The 1886s, second official, unofficial 501, 1890s 501s. Of course, then the patches don't match. 1897 triple pleated blouse would go with 1890s or the general 1890s pair called Spur Bites. The 1901s, the 1906 Bunkhouse. And that concludes episode one. Please join us for episode two when we'll talk about the Type 1 Trucker 506s. I've been Dan. This is Dan and Dano. Thanks for watching. <laughs>